Hi everyone, my name is Julie Sebi. I write the Analytics Corner blog that focuses on data engineering, analytics, and visualization with Alteryx and Spotfire. I'm located in beautiful Whitefish, Montana. If you find today's content useful, please hit the subscribe button or share the content through other social media. Last week, I was working with one of our engineers to streamline an alarm reporting process. Our engineers were receiving CSVs via email with alarm data and they have a Excel macro process to collate the data and pull out what they need. It's not a great process and it's not sustainable, so we're going to use Alteryx and possibly RPA to automate, improve it, and make it sustainable. So what I want to show you today are the, the CSVs and the format they come in. They're really in a very unfortunate format, and so my post today is going to show you exactly how I took this wonky CSV and made sense of it with Alteryx. The new format that we'll output from Alteryx will be easily consumable by BI applications. So you can see that I'm importing the file, and when we actually implement a new process, this will probably be a directory tool pulling all CSVs out of a certain folder in a shared drive. For now, I'm just connecting to it in order to work with the data. As you can see, the first record that comes in is a unit. And if I scroll down a little bit, you can see that uh, the unit itself is not in a column of data, it's just in a record. And then my column headers are actually repeated several different times. So the unit name number is listed at the top of each series of alarm events. It would be better if it were in a column, but it's not. There are also a different number of alarm events per unit. So it's not going to be a pattern of records where I could say just pull the first five and know that goes with a particular unit and then the column headers are repeating. Those are the main pain points. And that's what we're gonna to attempt to fix in working with this CSV file. Now, in all of my workflows, I start with a data cleaning tool to trim white space. I also like to put an auto field in so that I know all of my string columns are the, the minimum length that they can be in order to make things as efficient as possible. So from here, the first task I'm going to tackle is to get the unit name as a column of data rather than a record. The second task will be to get one row of header data rather than several. And then there's going to be just a little bit of cleanup work to get it to a usable data set. And so to begin with, I'm going to add a record ID because I know that once I get unit name in there as a column, I'm going to need to figure out how many rows a unit has which I'll do by finding a max record ID per well. So we start by adding this record ID. Next, I'm going to use a formula tool in order to start working on creating a unit column. Whenever I get a row with just the unit name, pretty much all of the other columns, at least columns two through six, are gonna be null. And so I apply that logic in a formula and I have it, if, if fields two through six are empty, then I populate it with unit one or else it's null. And the result is this column right here. And you can see that it's going to put in unit one on this record and then the rest of this is null. So of course it makes sense that after that step, I'm going to use a multi-row formula tool to update the unit column and carry that down. So I basically say, if the record is empty, then look one row higher and take that value. If it's not empty, take the unit value. And so you can see now this carries down very nicely. So once that's done, I no longer have a use for this particular or these particular records. And so I use a filter tool where I apply the same logic uh, or almost the same logic. I didn't go all the way to say fields two through six. If fields two, three, and four are empty, that's, that's efficient, that'll work. And so I'm getting rid of these records where it's pretty much only the unit name. Now I need to continue to update. I'm gonna continue to update the unit column because my next task is to get down to one row of essentially column names. And so what I've done here is said, when field one equals event time, event time being our first column name, then put column names in the unit or else give me the unit name. And so this is how I'm gonna delineate 
uh, a row that is what I'll call unit data from my column names. And then I also create a sort order column because I'm going to need to sort this in order to put uh, a column names row on top. So if it's column names one or else two. And then I apply that sorting. And here you can see exactly how many of these column names records I have. It's quite a few. So now I'm going to go through a series of tools with the intention of taking Okay, y'all, this got a little bit weird. So as I was about to explain how I was going to get down to just one record for the column names, I realized that the series of tools that I was using were a little bit convoluted and there was actually a much simpler solution. So I stopped my recording, rebuilt this, and now we're going to carry on. Just to recap, coming into this part of the workflow, what I have is several records that have my column names and then I have all my alarm data. I have a sort that sorts them, and you can see that I have tons of these um, column name records. And so what I'm going to do here that is a simpler solution than what I had previously had is I'm just going to split these records apart from my unit data. So if my unit column says column names, we're going to send it down one path, and if it does not, we'll send it down a different path. And then I will use a unique tool to take this from 111 records down to one record. We will union it together and then I will sort it based on my sort column. And now I have only one column names record and all of my alarm data or my unit data. I have a select tool to get rid of the sort order column and the record ID uh, because I don't need those anymore. Actually, at this point, I, I don't think I actually needed the record ID at all. I could have done without that. And now I'm going to move on to my dynamic column naming. I am going to, well, I'm going to hit run on my workflow again because I made modifications. And so here I am again updating the unit column because what's, what's going to happen is I have my first record is my column names, and then I'm going to use the dynamic rename tool to take the field names from the first row. And I don't want this to say column names, I want it to say unit. And so if it says column names, I rename it unit or else I leave it. Then I use my uh, dynamic rename tool, and the mode is take the field names from the first row of data for all of my columns and any columns that will come in in the future in case this CSV changes. And so now my data set is starting to look pretty good. It's lot, looking a lot better than what I started with. And from here, really, all I have to do is just a little bit of cleanup. Because this was a CSV, everything came in as a string, and I have a date time field that needs to be an actual date time. So I use my date time tool to convert my string to a date time format. And I tell Alteryx that it's month, day, four digit year, hours, minutes, seconds. And then I have a little bit of extra work to do to split apart uh, two columns here, my display path. I want to split this into multiple columns based on the forward slash. And then I also want to split my current state into two columns based on the comma. I just tell it display path forward slash delimiter and make it four columns. And on my current state, I just say comma is my delimiter and I want it to be two columns. And at this point we're almost done. So I want to rename a few columns. I rename my event time converted because the date time tool makes it take on a different name. And then I give the display path and the current state columns a couple different names. There's still a couple places in here where I know I have white space. Yes, there we go. That's what I was looking for. Um, my acknowledged or not, I have leading spaces. And so I'm going to trim that off with a data cleansing tool. And now I have a really nice data set that is a significant improvement over what I started with. That is all for today. Thank you so much. I hope you guys have a great week.